Hello and welcome to your June Investor Update. I'm Paco Breton, Head of Portfolio Management at Nutmeg. So in this update, I'll be looking at market performance in May, outlining some changes we've brought into the portfolios and assessing the potential market impact of upcoming elections. Markets had a difficult month in April, was May a more positive month for equities and bonds. May was a positive month with global equities up by a solid 2.8% in pound sterling terms. The US market grew by 3% and with similar returns for US smaller listed companies or small cap stocks. In the UK, the FTSE 100 continued to perform well with a monthly return of 2% while medium sized companies or mid cap posted a 4% return. Most developed markets had low single digit returns, with the exception of Japan, which had a negative month due to the weakness of the yen. Emerging market equities were also down and pushed lower by South Korea and Brazil. And fixed income rebounded in May after a difficult April. Um, the UK yields were up close to 1%, and corporate bonds performed similarly. However, it's worth noting that the correlation between bonds and equities remained high, meaning both tend to perform positively or negatively at the same time. And it's also of note, uh, in, May, in May was the strongest performance of the pound, which was up almost 2% against the dollar. Did you make any changes to nutmeg portfolios during the months? We removed our small overweight position in the Japanese yen, which we had held for some time across our fully managed portfolios. We had anticipated that the difference between relatively high base rates in the UK and the US versus low levels in Japan would narrow, which, which would favor a rebound in the yen. But this has not materialized and we are now neutral on the yen and finding it difficult to have any conviction in its direction. We also introduced a position in European industrials in higher risk portfolios, and we opened a small position in US technology stocks, which we are building as a long-term conviction trade via a holding in the NASDAQ. And this is in anticipation of ongoing strengths in these sectors in both regions, which we believe should continue to perform well in the current environment. Should not make investors be concerned about the market response to upcoming elections in the UK and in the US. In the UK, neither of the main parties is expected to propose policies that would have a large impact on markets. Labour, which currently appears to be the most likely winner, isn't proposing radical changes to economic policy. They aim to maintain discipline with public finances and make limited changes to taxes. These policies shouldn't significantly impact what matters to our portfolios, namely the gilt markets, local stocks, or the pound. Markets are so somehow unlikely to be impacted too much by whoever wins in the US as both the Republicans and the Democrats would potentially face a split Congress, making major changes to the economic program unlikely. On our side, we will continue to monitor the situation actively and you can read more about the historical impact of elections on market in a new article on our website. Then it's not unusual for investors to be concerned about significant events happening globally, whether political elections or geopolitical risks. However, what has really driven markets in recent years has been corporate earnings and central bank interventions. Our portfolios remained moderately pro-risk with an overweight position in equities, which has so far proven beneficial this year as the environment continues to be favorable for these more risky assets as we saw in May. As usual, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for a topic you'd like us to discuss in next month's investor update, you can contact us via social media, email, or in the comment section below this video.